Hey guys, I'm Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So the other day, the Smoke and Ape, temporarily offline, and Chuck and I were talking about what we could do for our upcoming Saturday show, which by now you've probably already seen. We decided we wanted to do a $1,000 ham shack challenge. And actually, this was the Smoke and Ape's idea. Um, he decided that we should all create our own ham shack challenge. So we said, okay, we can, we can do that. And we decided that we would, but instead of sharing it with each other, we're going to talk about it on the show, which again, by now you've seen, and then we're each going to have our own $1,000 challenge without sharing that information with the others. So ape doesn't know what I've done or TO's done or Chuck's done and vice versa we could all come up with something wildly different from each other. Some of this stuff may be the same. Some of the stuff probably isn't. I suspect I know one thing that probably T.O. has on there that I've got. Ape, who knows? Chuck is going to have a smoking antenna. You can bet your money on that. So let's take a look at my $1,000 ham shack challenge. And let me, let me figure out how to work slides. All right, here we go. The first thing, you need a radio. The choices here are something QRP for less money, potentially, or something 100 watts. I wanted a 100 watt radio. So for me, this narrowed it down to two choices, um, the Yaesu FT891 or the ICOM IC718. I don't know the 718 very well. I know the FT891. It does HF, it does six meters, it will do digital with an add-on. So my choice for the radio was this. Um, it's a solid radio, it's small. If you're getting started, you may not have a lot of space to set up your ham shack. Ain't nothing wrong with this, with this radio up here. Let me point to the right place. The other options would be to go with something like a G90, for example, which would save us a couple hundred dollars because I can probably get a G90 for about $400 brand new. But I didn't want QRP. The other thing that we did decide when we set up our challenge was whatever we put on our list has to be new purchases. We're not including shipping. We're not including tax and any of these prices. This is the retail price of all this stuff, okay? And it is all new gear. Yes, you can probably find a good deal on a used HF radio or less than I can get a brand new FT891. But that's not something everybody can go out and do. So we're showing new gear only, all right? So my choice for our $1,000 ham shack radio is a Yaesu FT891. That gives us, so far, a total of $640 for our challenge. Great, let's move on. That leaves us with $360. All right. We got to have an antenna because that radio ain't nothing but an expensive paperweight without an antenna. So here we go. Again, with the pointing, I got to figure that out. The Cartana Mercury or the Artemis or our new one, which is unreleased yet. Any of these antennas are designed to be used without a tuner. So the Mercury is a link dipole. If you have the previous Cartana Artemis, that is an end fed half wave. If you cut for 40 meters, it's going to naturally be resonant resonant on 40, 30, 20, and 10 without a tuner required. And I think when you're looking at a $1,000 ham shack challenge, a tuner is not going to be something you're going to be able to squeeze in here. So we want a resonant multiband antenna and something like the Mercury, which again is a link dipole or an NFED is our best choice. Okay. So our total is up to $715. Not bad. Let's go further. Cable, you got to have coax. You got to have coax. So here is a choice that you can make, and it depends on your mindset, how you feel about this. You could go and save a little bit of money, and I'm not talking much, less than 10 bucks, and go with something like RG8X. Or you can go with something like RG213 which is slightly more, but has better uh, or lower loss characteristics over the length of the run, measured in dB. J2 
generally those numbers are given in dB of signal loss per 100 feet of cable. RG213 is going to be better than RG8X. Um, that, of course, becomes more of a deal at UHF and VHF frequencies. So my choice for cable is a, uh, what is this, 100-foot section, 50-foot section of uh, RG213, 100 foot. And that's $77. That brings our total up to $792. Not bad. So, so far now we've got a radio, we've got an antenna, and we've got coax. What do we got left? Well, we need the electrics. We need a power supply. Now, here's an interesting thing. You can buy a power supply, which is what I have on the list. This is a, a feature-free MFJ 25 amp power supply for $125. This is about the cheapest power supply you're going to be able to get. Maybe you can find something on sale, Black Friday kind of deal, but $125 25 amp power supply puts you in the ballpark of absolutely functional. Is this fancy with a gauge and everything? No. Got a couple of binding posts and an on off switch. You know, good to go. Provides power. Another option that you could think of or that you might think about is instead of a power supply, get a 12 volt LIFEPO and get something like a 20 amp hour Miati or Chin's LIFEPO battery, which is fairly inexpensive and obviously can be recharged a couple thousand times, might be 25 or $30 cheaper. I would go with a power supply for my initial ham shack, set, ham shack setup. Say that three times fast. All right. That puts our total up to $917. Now, we're there. You've got a radio, you've got an antenna, you've got a power supply to run all that, all right? We have coax to run to our antenna, which assumes it's somewhere within 100 feet of your shack. $917, challenge done, right? We made it, we made the goal. But now what doesn't this give you? Well. The FT-891 is a great radio, but it doesn't have a sound card built in it. Um, it has an accessory port, has data port. Um, it does, obviously, CW with a key. It does single sideband. It does AM. That covers it. So what doesn't it do? It doesn't do digital mode. So it won't do FT-8. It won't do FT-4. It won't do PSK. Hmm. What can we do about that? All right. We've got a couple more slides here to ponder. We can add a Raspberry Pi 400. Now, this is the 400 kit for $100. These are available all day. I did a video about this a week or two ago. You can't find Raspberry Pi 4s very easily, but there are Pi 400s in stock at multiple retailers right now at the second you're watching this video. Guarantee it. And this guy had 25 of them in stock. I forgot who this was. DigiKey probably had 25 Pi 400 kits in stock. I recommended the kit here. It costs $30 more, but this gives you a full power supply. It gives you an HDMI cable. It gives you a mouse. It gives you a SD card. And I think it gives you a book about all the wonderful things you can do with a Raspberry Pi. The Pi 400 is the same as a Raspberry Pi 4B. It is four gigs. That is plenty for any kind of ham-related software you need to load. All you need to add to this is a monitor, which you probably already have. And you can find tons of old LCD panels, which will work fine for running ham software. So there you go. There's a shack computer right there. Um, I know several people, temporarily offline, I believe, and or the Smoke and Ape, both run their rigs off of Raspberry Pis. I don't, but that's me, and that's because other reasons it has nothing to do with Raspberry Pi being bad. But you've got rig control software available through um, FL Rig and its whole suite of applications, FL Digi and all that. So there's digital modes there. WSJTX is available for. Raspberry Pi. So that gives you all the digital modes on that computer and rig control. Even if you're not using it for digital, you can use it for rig control and use it for SSB and AM and CW. So 
the Raspberry Pi 400 as your shack computer. That bumps us up a little bit. That Pi added a hundred bucks. Eh, we kind of blew past a thousand there. Not much. We've just eased past a thousand. We haven't blown past it. All right. So our non-digital total, we're under a grand. But when we add in that Pi 400, that bumps us over to 1,017. And you'll notice in the slide here, I did put um, ultra budget laptop. If you're near a micro center, they have that Maestro Evolve $60 laptop, which is truly an ultra budget laptop. It runs Windows 10. I bought one just to play with, and I've loaded all the CPS software I have for all my different HTs and whatnot on it. That's probably all I'm going to use it for. Would it run WSJTX? Sure, it would. Is it the greatest computer in the world? No. Are you going to be rendering videos on it? Oh, Lord, no. Will it work for a shack computer? Yes, it will. 60 bucks for that. So that would actually knock 40 bucks off of our budget and put us below $1,000 with the super budget Maestro laptop. Your choice. I think the Pi 400 is probably a little better computer, but it doesn't have a monitor. If you buy the laptop, at least it comes with a monitor, mouse, and keyboard built in. And then last but not least, we got to have a way for the FT891 to talk to the computer, whether it's the, the junky laptop or whether it's a Raspberry Pi 400. The 891 does not have a sound card interface like more expensive radios does do. So we have to have a way to interface it. And the DigiRig is my selection for that. The DigiRig itself is 50 bucks. Um, you're going to need a couple cable setups with it, which is about another 20 or $30. Uh, so with that cost, I think I allowed $70 for DigiRig, maybe 80 um, I don't know because I don't have that set up exactly. You're looking at $1,087. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not quite a $1,000 complete ham shack, but I'd say under $1,100 is, is a pretty good setup. And again, if you go with the $60 laptop, you could potentially knock $40 off that price. But again, you're under $1,100. And if you choose to forego digital modes for the time being and stay with strictly voice and, and AM and CW, you are under $1,000. Guys, that is my Ham Shack challenge for today. I, I think I did a pretty good job. Um, you know, like I said, there were some considerations that I took ahead of time. I wanted 100 watts. That was absolutely something I had to have. And I feel that this would be incomplete without mentioning the digital options. Even if you chose not to use them, at some point, every new ham wants to play with FT8, right? Um, so, you know, there are some compromises, like a lot of things in amateur radio, some things are compromises. Every antenna is a compromise. I would want a tuner, but I cannot add a tuner in here and keep us anywhere near $1,000. A low-end tuner is another $200. And again, with the right antenna choice, you don't necessarily have to have a tuner because the Cartena will be naturally resident on four bands if you have the NFET. The link dipole, whatever three bands you choose, will be resonant on those bands. So again, no tuner needed. All right, guys, that's all I've got in this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And ring that little bell down there in the doodly-doo if you haven't already so you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Thanks a lot, y'all. 73.